Well, my editing skills are crap, but can the same thing be said about Bright Burn? Stick around and find out. I don't know. I was going for like a <coughs> like a creepy minor version of the Superman theme. That actually sounds more sad to me than creepy. Da 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 ba 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 da ba. Yeah, definitely more sad than scary. Anyway, hi, I'm Peter Franson from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions here with my uncut review of Brightburn. The synopsis on IMDb reads: What if a child from another world crash landed on Earth, but instead of becoming a hero to mankind, he proved to be something far more sinister? Uh, talking about the story, the script, pacing, tone, that kind of stuff. Uh, this is a super horror movie. I want a nickel for every time someone says that. I'm, I'm probably not the f f first person to come up with that. But uh, yeah, that's. I, I hope this becomes kind of a new genre. Uh, it's it's structured, paced, and shot like a horror movie. So that's really the experience you're going to have with this. But it has some classic Superman origin story elements, you know, like a small farming town and a child that comes down in, a, in like a meteor or whatever type thing crash lands and they adopt it and raise it and notice that he's different from other kids. And there's a sweet girl next door that he kind of has a little bit of a crush on and he wears a red cape and has a secret identity and a symbol that's associated with his superpowered identity and, and a whole bunch of other little things. Um, even some specific Man of Steel vibes in the script with talk of this young boy having a special purpose and being here for a reason. Of course, that also dates back to the Donner film. But anyway, um, it's uh, it's got a lot of those kind of trappings, but the 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 tone, the feel of this thing is totally full on horror movie. It's uh, not a visual effects spectacle like you would have in a lot of superhero movies. Largely, the the visual effects moments are when Brandon, this this young superboy type guy. Um, is doing bad things, <laughs> and so it's from the victim's point of view, like a like a monster movie or a horror movie, where you're not seeing, except in brief flashes here and there, what the bad guy is doing, and uh, really the effects are more on the line of like gruesome things, like what's happening to the victims, and there are definitely some gruesome deaths here. Uh, I also wonder, just from a writing standpoint, this is just a side detail, I wonder if the name Brandon was chosen or landed on maybe as they were brainstorming because of Brandon Routh, who played Superman in Superman Returns. It totally could be coincidence. I mean, Chris, after Christopher Reeve, would have in many ways been a more likely choice, but maybe they thought that would have felt disrespectful in some way. Of course, why didn't they go with Henry Cavill? I don't know, maybe that's because that's more recent, or Henry didn't work for other reasons in the script, because um, there are some reasons that they chose Brandon Breyer as his name that uh, you'll see in the movie. Anyway... That's a side issue. There's also a little bit of family drama elements in this uh, super horror movie, as these parents are trying to figure out what is wrong with their son and how they can help him, how they can love him through this change that he's going through, even as they are also increasingly afraid of him. And I really appreciate that when a horror movie is more than just horror, when it has some dramatic elements emotionally anchoring the movie and getting me invested in the the story, the characters, and the, you know, so having some of that real human drama in there in any movie is going to be helpful to me, but I really like to see it in horror movies as well. Um, Let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, uh, I think that people who are parents right now or have been parents in the past of boys that are Brandon's age, which is like 11 turning 12 in this movie, uh, may get something extra from the experience. I have, uh, a, my oldest is a, uh, is a boy who is uh, 11, going on 12 in just a couple of months, so almost the exact same age. And I do think that there's maybe something more that people that have had some experience with that may gain from the family drama elements and the, the coming of age elements from the parents' perspective as they're trying to figure out how do we navigate this real big shift going on. Of course, what Brandon is going through... <laughs> 
is much more intense than uh, what uh, any parent is going to go through. But um, they certainly leave things open for either a sequel or a spin-off of some kind, which I would love to see. No more to say on that. As far as the cast goes, I felt like they were all solid. Uh, I love horror movies that aren't filled with just teenage or 20-something actors that are cast primarily for their looks, you know, but horror movies that are filled with seasoned performers that can really sell the different flavors of fear. And uh, and also Jackson A. Dunn playing Brandon in this movie doesn't display, you know, a wide emotional range. The, the script doesn't call for that, but he's a good fit for the contrasting warm and cold versions of Brandon uh, in this movie. So that was really nice. As far as stunts and visuals, not much to say. The visuals are nice and they're subtle. You know, it's a horror movie, so they're kind of quote-unquote hiding the monster a lot of the time. And actually that, for me, feeds the sense of realism. If you see that monster, or in this case this superpowered boy too often and especially if the if the effects aren't really you know got a lot of budget and time put behind them then that can take away from the sense of realism and i think horror movies if you want us to feel the the imminence of the danger that the characters are in you want the danger to feel real and grounded i think and so you know hiding that monster especially if it's a, a visual effects type of monster really feeds the sense of realism for me and so that's what they did a lot of in this movie that's not to say that you don't see him doing pretty much all, all the main things that you would expect a Superman inspired character to do, you see all of those things, uh, but the way they handle it with the visual effects and practical effects and stuff like that, uh, I, I thought worked really well. In fact, the budget specifically, I'll comment on, makes me wonder if sequels and spin-offs, which I said may be likely, could be, be even more likely to be greenlit. You know, I mean, I think the reason that we see a lot of horror movies that just have sequel after sequel after sequel is because these horror movies don't take near as much of a budget to produce. They don't have, they tend not to have near as many special effects. And even though you have conceptually uh, a character in this movie that has the power levels and, and variety of powers that Superman has, you're not showing them as much because it's shot differently. It's not a superhero movie where the hero is on display and all these big action sequences involve him front and center doing his spectacular visual effects things. No, it's not that kind of movie. He's doing all those kinds of crazy, you know, uh, super-powered things, but we're from the victim's perspective, and so we're not seeing it near as much front and center. And so for that reason, the budget can afford to be much smaller and I think make sequels much more likely than maybe, you know, uh, e maybe even, you know, the, the DC Universe movies right now. I mean, who knows? Who knows? Um, anyway, I don't usually comment on the music and sound, but one thing I will say is that there's some nice piano music early on in the movie that seems clearly to be inspired by Man of Steel. I mean, there's a number of beats in here that are not just pulling from Superman in general and his history, but specifically from the recent interpretations of him by Zack Snyder in those movies, you know, and and uh, I almost kind of wonder in the back of my mind <laughs> if in any way there's any relationship to the inception of this movie to kind of like some of the complaints that some people had that, oh man, these Superman movies are too dark, you know? <laughs> like somebody said, huh, what if we took that like all the way? <laughs> anyway, um, as far as the themes in this movie, are there any themes that might stimulate some worthwhile thought or conversation about moral, spiritual, or philosophical issues? And I, I, there does seem to be an intended parallel to the experience that parents have of raising their children um, who are going through through this coming of age stage of life, you know, uh, tweens and early teens and becoming more withdrawn and undergoing personality changes as they're entering into those teenage years. You know, the parents in this movie, uh, like many parents in real life, you know, seeing their, their kids go through that adolescent transition, um, you know, they're asking, well, who, gosh, who is this kid? He's behaving so strangely. This isn't like him at all, you know. And they're struggling to get him to open up and to be honest about what he's feeling and why, you know. So there's a lot of parallels there, I think, to the parenting experience. As I mentioned earlier, my oldest son is exactly the same age as Brandon. We've already seen some subtle changes in his behavior that have reminded us that, you know what, we need to be increasingly building into our relationship with him now uh, so that as he naturally becomes 
becomes more withdrawn, we'll have a good foundation from which to reach out to him. And I think for people who are uh, maybe just becoming parents, this is, you know, can be a kind of a, 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 a trigger to help you look forward and realize, you know what, right now, when they are in kindergarten, you know, or, or earlier, I mean, as soon as they come out, you know, and, and moving forward, you know, that's the time to really build into those relationships. I mean, it's never too late to start, but uh, as early as you can start building into those relationships so that you have a good uh, amount of credit that you've established with them so that they are willing to maybe open up and trust you in those years when they are going to feel much more uh, naturally distrustful of you, you know. So um, I think this really could be a reminder of the importance of investing in the relationship with your kids. And um, and also, I think there's good reminders in this movie that when you when they're when kids are entering that volatile stage, which certainly starts before they hit 11 or 12 or whatever, but I think gets intensified the older they get. You know, as they're entering those emotionally volatile years or just seasons of life or whatever, that we be sure that we aren't responding to their behavior by adding fuel to the fire on our end. Um, which is only going to make their anger worse. It's going to close off opportunities for us to hear their true hearts and then to speak truth and encouragement into their lives. And I think that there's some examples of, of parenting going south and adding fuel and anger to an already tense situation and just making it worse, you know. Um, so uh, it brought to mind two verses, Ephesians 6, 4 in the ESV says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and and instruction of the Lord. So it contrasts the two that like provoking your children to anger actually works against and is different from bringing them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. And so if we are provoking our children to anger as we're trying to discipline and instruct them, we should realize, oh, I'm doing something wrong here. This isn't just on my kid. You know, uh, if I am adding fuel to this fire as I'm trying to discipline and instruct them, I'm doing it wrong, you know. And then Colossians 3.21 ESV says, uh, fathers, do not provoke your children lest they become discouraged, you know because they're just going to it's just going to shut them down it's going to it's going to create the opposite effect of what we want um so anyway yeah those uh, two verses certainly that's not to let our children off the hook and just let them get away with any kind of emotional outburst they want but i think the the message there is don't um from our end uh bring more into the mess you know uh okay so i have no idea what your tastes are in movies but if i were a time traveler i'd go back in time and say Peter, oh, oh, as you suspected from the first time you saw this trailer, this is the kind of thing that you want to see. I mean, how cool is it to, you know, when you can think back and remember those years where people thought superhero movies were silly and that they were, you know, only spoof worthy like Batman Forever and Batman and Robin and some other superhero movies of that time. It just seemed like, you know, superhero movies were always going to be these things that people didn't take seriously. Now we've entered many years later, had a number of superhero movies that are taken very seriously and some that are still played for comedic effect. But now we've arrived at this point where where superhero movies are so normal and accepted that you can twist that formula and make a super horror movie. And this is totally up your alley, Peter. Um, but you don't necessarily need to see it in theaters. It's not that mind-blowing and, you know, gripping and intense and new of an experience uh, that you need to see it in theaters. This is one you can wait and rent, Pater. Um, but uh, you also want to buy it. So maybe rent it and then plan to buy it later, mostly to watch the special features and to show to other people. This is the kind of movie you're going to want to show to other people. People see the looks on their faces, <laughs> um, and uh, but you know when it becomes discounted or used, that's the time to add it to your collection. It's not one you're going to have personally an urge to watch again and again, but you'll want to show it to others and to have it in your collection, especially if they make sequels or spinoffs, which would be really great. All right, you can get my spoiler-filled reactions to *Brightburn* in my spoiler car video series. Just one of many perks available for your support over at Patreon.com/SpiritBladeProductions. This one's rated R for horror violence slash bloody images and languages. All right, those are my thoughts. I'd love to get yours in the comments below. Please like, share, subscribe, spread this content around, help more people find it. I'd be so grateful for that. And then I hope you join us soon over at ChristianGeekCentral.com as we continue to geek out and seek the truth. I'm